Meeting inspiring people inspires me and listening to an empowering woman story is a treat for my soul. This week I sat down with Nisha Jagtiani, a renowned name with an integral role in Middle Eastern retail market. Come aboard with me to listen to her powerful journey here at the umasho.com. So Nisha, coming from a business background, did you ever have to make any business plan? Oh, of course, we had to make a business plan. Any business needs a plan, but I think the first thing was to figure out like really what the concept was mm -hmm. and really what the vision for it was and what uniqueness it brought to the table. Because I think in a marketplace like ours, we have enough so you've got to create your own gap and your own niche to kind of make yourself stand out and have a reason for being almost and then after that the business plan comes how did the journey with iconic start <laughs> well it started with a conversation um, i was working with the ceo of splash raza for 2 years and i was kind of walking through how a fashion retail business really works. I traveled with him. Uh, I was part of his core team. I debated every strategy with him. And about a year and a half actually later, we were sitting and having a coffee in the office. And I said, let's create something together because both of us had this fire to create and this passion to do something uh, different. And a couple of days later from Europe, I called him and I told him, I said, you know what, I have the concept, I'm so excited. Came back and literally we started working on it as I got back from my European trip. And we had in that year traveled to every fashion destination, retail uh, destination. Through various ideas and things, we put together Iconic and it was really inventing a fashion destination which thought differently, which was positioned differently, which had a USB to it, and to give something to the Middle Eastern consumer which was different to what existed. A lot of research obviously goes into something like this. So do you consider yourself a person who enjoys um, getting into researches or you are more into strategies? I think if you don't enjoy retail, you can't be in retail. Research is retail. It's walking, it's seeing what's happening. And if you don't enjoy that, I don't think you can be a strategist in retail for sure. And um, you need to see one thing that excites you. And that one thing becomes an idea and then it becomes a concept. And then you talk to 10 experts and 10, 15 people around you. And that idea develops into something which is not an idea, which is a strategy, you know, in the future. Talking about experts, you were really literally raised by two experts. You come from such an illustrious family. Uh, what were the things that you learned that is helping you to move forward in your career? They both lived and breathed their work and they lived and breathed what they were doing. And they were very focused and that's all they wanted to do. So I think that's, that's what I learned. I said, when I started even Iconic, I lived and breathed it. You know, I used to dream about things. How do you define fashion? Fashion is who you are. Like it defines, I think, style and the way you put yourself together reflects a lot about how you are as a person. Who inspires you or what inspires you? I think in general people inspire me and touch wood, in my work I meet people every day so I'm constantly inspired. What does success mean to you? Happiness. I think um, if you manage to find what makes you happy, you're a successful person. 
how would you like to inspire people around you uh, who have the ambition, who have the energy, but don't have the kind of vision that you have? I think start something. Take the risk to start. You never know where you'll end up. You'll never know what will come your way. I didn't plan any of it. Even though I've come from a family which is a business family, believe it or not, I never thought I would work, first of all. But I ended up working and I ended up really enjoying it. And I didn't expect Iconic to happen. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. And I think you just have to start. Focus on one thing and go after it. And what you'll find is probably it will build into something you never even imagined, you know? On a daily basis, what are the things that you do now that balances you? Well, I'm trying to get back to my yoga. I do meditate. I'm trying not to watch so much TV. <laughs> I'm trying. Yeah. If you're on a TV show, you have to watch the TV. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know, but I watch a lot of TV shows. Um, I still want to do a lot. And I think that when you're at work, you should kind of devote yourself fully to that. But when in your free time, I think it's about bringing things that make you happy, that make you peaceful, that kind of bring a smile to your face. And that's about it. It's quite simple, actually. OK, now we'll do some fun questions, rapid fire questions. OK. What's your favorite holiday destination? Probably Rome. Your favorite food? Japanese. Who's your favorite actor? Leonardo DiCaprio. One thing that you absolutely love about this city? The comfort, the ease. Everything's so simple. One thing you absolutely love about, about yourself? that I can laugh extremely loud. One thing that you would like to change about yourself? Impatience. Define yourself in one word. Well, in my house, they call me princess. Mm. I don't know. So apt. So with that, we come to an end of this fabulous chat with you, my princess. Thank you so much, Uma. <laughs> it was fun, Nisha. And I hope uh, my viewers really got inspired by all the things that you've done at this young age. And we're looking forward to all the things that you're going to achieve in the future and all the best for that. Oh, hopefully. Thank you so much. Bye.